Welcome to Beyond the Pod, presented by SodaStick.com. Brunette, he moves, Brunette back in, he scores! Minnesota has upset the Colorado Avalanche! Andrew Brunette, the game-winning goal! Here are your hosts, the second greatest scorer in Gopher hockey history, Pat Micheletti. And the second greatest hockey analyst on this podcast, Brandon Molesky. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Pod. It's brought to you by SodaStick.com. I'm Brandon Molesky, Pat Micheletti with me as always. Pat, uh, we've always made Beyond the Pod just an off-season podcast. We've decided to continue it year-round, so this is our first in-wild season podcast. Right. Uh, and a very I, big and moment. I'm glad we did it, and I'm glad uh, the team is off to such a great start, so we have uh, good things to talk about. They are off to a good start, and we're now joined by the assistant coach for the Minnesota Wild, Bob Woods. Bob, really appreciate your time today, and uh, let's talk about that hot start, 3-0. I'm, I'm guessing as a coach, you're pretty happy with it. Yeah, I think any team you want to get out to a big start, and uh, you know, we always talk about it, try to get above 500 as much as you can, because you know, in a long season, you're going to have those stretches where things might not be going your way, and it's a lot easier to come out of those when you have a little bit of a cushion so you know we just want to keep playing well and you know we're teaching as we go here we got a lot of new faces uh, this year so uh, guys are grasping everything pretty good and uh, we're happy with the start every game is tough in the nhl bob you know we know that um but when you start the season and you start it on the road is that i mean can can that be an advantage sometimes being the pressure of a of uh a team opening at home and, you know, just everything that goes along with that. A hundred percent. I think, you know, and it also gives you a chance to bond as a, as a group, you know, we did our little thing up in Duluth there right. in Minnesota, but uh, I think when you get on the road with your guys and uh, it's when you really get to know each other, uh, you know, and I think, like you said, the pressure of being at home, sometimes, you know, you're trying to show off a little bit or you're overexcited and the emotions are high it kind of gives you a chance to settle in. And uh, again, we love the two games out in California. And, uh, you know, I think everybody was pretty excited about the, the home opener there and how everything played out. But, uh, you yeah, know, it's been a good three games. Yeah, I want to talk about that home opener, Bob. You know, as a, as a fan and a media member, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of wild games in my life. And uh, to me, that was one of the most entertaining regular season wild games in terms of play, playoff atmosphere, obviously the way the, the game transpired that I've ever seen. As a coach, do you have a chance to like enjoy the entertainment of the game at all? Or is it just constant anxiety? Like what 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 is that kind of game like through your perspective? Well if you if the cameras were on the on the bench the whole time you'd see you know smiles and you know it's just <laughs> exciting. Like the, the the atmosphere in the building was awesome. Uh you know, you, you could tell that the fans were excited to be back. Uh, you could tell the players were excited to have fans back in the building. Uh, it was just, and again, we're playing Winnipeg, who's one of our big rivals. We haven't seen them in a year and a half or whatever. And, and you know, the rivalry took right off right from the get-go. So that made for a, a great uh, start. And, uh, you know, I think it was just a lot of very emotional night. You know, we talked about TK before the game. It was a big part of our organization and miss them dearly and uh you know it was just uh our guys were motivated and uh, it was just a fun game to be a part of um you know w w when you came to camp this year and well let's take it back to when you first got here um you know you could pretty much or at least some of us who thought we could anyway look at the roster and say mm -hmm, you know it, it, it's it's uh this is pretty much going to be it. You know, you could pick out the guys this year, this year, um, there was a lot of competition. I mean, when you look at, and, and I'm saying that in the sense that the, the, the younger guys that you have coming up are, are really, really good players. And, you know, a lot of them could have make it. Some didn't, some aren't ready yet, but, uh, uh, that cupboard is, is fully stocked. Well, it's just changed. You know, this is my yep. fifth season here, and, and I know coming in the first year there, you know, I went to a development camp, and you know, two thirds of the team were free agent guys. You know, it's yeah. just because of the situation and the runs that uh, were going on. You know, there just wasn't a lot in the cupboard. But now it's exciting, and for us as coaches, you know, we hadn't had the uh, development camps or rookie camps where we got to actually see some of our kids. So it was exciting to see these kids and where they're at and the, and the development of them and 
and it's, it's exciting for us to see what's coming. You know, there's yeah. some really good options out there. There's, there's some guys down in Iowa that we know if we need can come up and make an impact right away. And, and again, it was exciting for these guys because this was a camp where there was spots to be won. And, yeah. you know, even there, we had so many new guys coming in. There was, you know, fighting for position, you know, where are you going to find yourself in the lineup? Uh, you know, especially on the back end, we had four new defensemen this year. So um, it's just, uh, again, it's, it's exciting uh, for an organization and, and we love the group we have. I just think, you know, you look at how we stack up here, you know, we have four lines that can all play and we're not worried who they play against. We have six defensemen that we can throw out in any situation. And that, that makes for a, a good mix for us. And I think it'll bode well for us uh, down the road. Let's talk about that, uh, the back end, the blue liners. Um, you know, obviously got a bunch of new faces, but Alex Goligoski in particular, when I've read things about him, it seems like he's one of those guys that you see him in person and people are shocked at how good of a hockey player he is because he just doesn't look like a hockey player. Um, <laughs> obviously, he's been around the league a long time and, and you've, you've, uh, you know, you saw a bunch of them last year when you guys were in the same division, but, uh, has anything surprised you with him? Is there anything that you didn't didn't, didn't really realize until he was uh, w- within your own organization? Well, I can honestly say I've loved him ever since I coached against him in the minors. Uh, you know, I was in Hershey. He was in uh, Wilkes-Barre when his pro career started. And I just thought he was such a composed and good skater, very uh, calm. Like he just makes the right decisions all the time. And, and uh, you know, actually – He's probably more physical than I thought he was. I didn't realize that. Like, he doesn't shy away. He's not afraid to get his nose in there for a – you know, he's not a huge defenseman. But, again, his skating and just his hockey smarts. Like, you put him in Spurgeon, who I think's just got an excellent hockey IQ as well. You know, it's – you know, it's just – you can see how well they work together. And, uh, again, guys that you can use, like killing penalties, power play – five on five, four on four, three on three, you know, they're just very universal guys. So um, we're excited to have him. Uh, he's fit in great so far and uh, know he's going to be a big contributor to us uh, in the future here as well. I mean, it, it blows me away. I mean, he, it, to me, he hasn't lost a step, you know, from his skating. I mean, you, as you mentioned, you, you coach against them and uh, you know, over the years, it, it's, it's amazing how well, you know, he, he continues to, to skate, get up the ice, that makes you guys a faster team also, doesn't it? Oh, 100%. And that's, you know, the NHL, that's what it is. You yeah. got to be able to skate nowadays. you got to have speed. And and we want our D involved. If you watch in the offensive zone, our D are moving around like they're forward sometimes, but, you know, they can get back. And we want to create offensively that way. You know, coming out of our zone, we want our D joining. You know, we want to come as four or five guys. So, you know, that's how you create offense, and that's what this league is is, is gone to. And uh, we, I think we have very mobile defensemen. Kulikov, Merrill, they, they all can skate, you know. Yeah. That's, that's uh, you know, good for us, and that'll fit well for us having success. Well, one guy I want to talk about, and, and I don't know if it's because he's got the A on his sweater now or, you know, just, um, you know, realizing, you know, he's, he's, he's at that point where he's got to be a guy, but – Matt Dumba has been terrific, uh, in my opinion, anyway, in in the three games thus far. Blocking shots, you know, selling out, you know, getting a ton of shots. Um, Talk about his game a little bit and his maturity, you know, where it's it's gone to. Well, Matt, he's been here a while now, you know. I think he realizes that he has to take that step. And, you know, I thought last year he started to do it. And then, like you said, getting the A put on his jersey now is, you know, even forced that even more. And. And he's a guy that cares, you know, and we really realized last year in our lineup when we had uh, Felino and uh, Dumba were both out at the same time. And it just changed the whole atmosphere of our locker room, our bench, everything. And those two guys are big pieces uh, of what we're doing here. And and Maddie, what I love this year is he's shooting the puck. Like he's oh. got such a good shot and he, ha- he has a shot mentality at this point so far and he's created goals from that the, the game winner in anaheim there was off his shot uh, it was uh, you know at least one the other night that same thing but he's thinking shot because you know when you're given a gift like that you got to use it and i thought maybe in the past he hasn't used it enough and, and again you know he's going to get you're going to get his compete all the time he's going to yeah. 
put his body out there and sacrifice because he cares about the Minnesota Wild and his teammates, and that's why he's wearing a letter and why he's having success right now. Yeah, Dumba had nine shots on goal in the game against Winnipeg. Uh, you know, Jared Spurgeon, what, in the second period, you went, what, four or five minutes without him on the ice. I know as a coaching staff, you have plans in place of, hey, if this guy is out of the game in the middle of the game, what do you do? But that being said, how difficult is that to kind of manage minutes and, and organize uh, proper rotations and matching up against the other team when you have a guy like him out in the middle of the game? Well, it definitely changes things a little bit. But again, because of our depth, we have guys that can slide up or, or down or whatever. Like everybody can fit any role that we have. You know, Kulikov's been a power play uh, defense right. in, in his career too. So he's maybe not seeing it now, but he's quite capable of doing it. Uh, Brodeen, you know, can fill in there. Like there's, there's so many guys that are so universal that just gives us a lot of flexibility as coaches. And and even on the front end, too, with our forwards, you can say the same thing. We've got most of the guys in our lineup can kill penalties. You know, most of them could be on the power play. So, you know, that bodes well when uh, for coaches when you run into those situations where you have an in injury or or somebody's sick or whatever. You know, you can have guys that you know can fill the, fill the void. How fun is it to watch 97 every day? <laughs> he's a special kid. Yeah, like he, it's, he's an easy guy to love because he comes to the rink every day. He's always smiling. He wants to be on the ice. He wants to practice. Uh, he loves competing. And, and so impressed with him the other night. You know, you got Stanley, who's six foot seven or whatever he is, and he's messing with him. And he's not bowing down. Like, you know, and he's going to have to be that way because teams are going to try to get him off his game, but they're going to realize pretty quick that. That gets him going even more. So, uh, you know, and he showed it the, against Winnipeg there. He didn't well, shy away, and he kept doing it. Well, there, there was no way after he got really two penalties on him, he was dead tired, exhausted. There was no way he was coming off the ice. No. I mean, no. I mean there's no, no way. No. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at him, and he's you know, can barely breathe. But, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm you know. I'm going to be part of this game winner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he's, again, he loves to compete and, uh, and that's what makes him special. And, you know, the skill level, like you can just tell the crowd, you can feel it. And with the, the crowd, the, they can sense the excitement when he touches the puck that something could happen. And uh, that's a special thing. And, and Fiala has the same capabilities. Oh, yeah. You know, he's yeah. the guy that when they have the puck on their stick, something good's going to happen. And uh, it's a good feeling for us. Well, you know, the, the, the one thing, what I like about 97 is when he's on the bench and one of his teammates scores, you know, t to see his reaction is, you know, I mean, it's like, yeah, you know, I mean, he's yeah. just excited for that guy, you know. Yeah. He, he and, gets that. And I think that's the environment we create uh, here. Like, I just think our guys, the team is everything. Like, yeah. that is the number one thing. Guys know that when they get in here. That's non-negotiable. Team right. has to be first, and and it's a contagious like guy. It's a good feeling, and yeah. and it equals success. I, I just believe when you have a group like that that works together, sticks up for each other, and loves each other, you're going to have success. It just has to happen. Well, in such a long season, too, right? I mean, yes. you know, I mean, you got. I mean, think about it. We're in October. You'll end in mid June or whatever, yes. right? Yes. I mean, Hopefully, and, yes. That, that's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> be able to hey. keep that. You know, if you don't have that, good luck, right? Yes, yes, yes. Hey, yeah. hey Bob, back to the uh, the end of the Winnipeg game. Uh, I'm hoping you're going to let us in on the inside a little bit. Or what, what was the conversation like between the coaches and upstairs uh, for that offsides uh, review when you, you know, you're challenged? Like, uh, you know, uh, you know, who initiated the conversation? What was that discussion like? Because I just uh, I, I found that fascinating because I think – uh, I think most of us, when you see that, you know, uh, Shifley coming across the blue line for empty net, or you, you know, obviously the fans, half of them already gave up. Uh, most of us aren't thinking, aren't thinking about a review at that point. Well, some of them are going home, but I'm sure they <laughs> rush back to their seats. But uh, just how it works is, you know, we have our guys, Jonas and uh, TJ are in uh, back in the office. So one is on Hawkeye, which is the feeds that shows what the refs get to look at. So. They look every time the puck enter, enters our zone, they recheck it and they look to see if anybody's offside or whatever. So while the play is going on, somebody's checking that. And then um, um, Brett McLean has the earpiece uh, down on the bench. So 
as soon as they see me offside, they're screaming down, challenge it, challenge it, challenge it. So then Mac will go to Dino and say, challenge the offside. And we challenged it. And thankfully uh, it was worse. Yeah. But uh, our guys are great. It's not a, it's an easy task being in that situation because there's a lot going on. So we give them a lot of credit for, for getting that done because, you know, it was a difference in the game. Hey. You know, we, we don't get that call. The game's over and uh, we're uh, not three and oh. So, uh, yeah. And our guys, once we got it, it was just like scoring a goal. It was life. Okay. We didn't lose a goal. We scored one and they ended up tying up and went in an overtime. So, it worked out. And, and your star players got a rest. You know, they were put out there with 247. So, it was also exactly. an extended rest for them. And we use that space too to, hey, if this is uh, good, like we got to make sure we're ready to. Go out there and find a way to tie this thing up. Um, how about Kalen Addison? What does he need to improve on to become a uh, full-time NHLer? Well, I just think, you know, it's still, he's young. Um, strength, you know, like that's one thing when he was up here even last year for the playoffs. I just said, don't let size be an issue. So, again, he's a smart player. He's got a good stick. He can skate. And uh, he's going to be good. It's just. Again, there's no need for us to rush them. You know, we have seven NHL quality defensemen here, and uh, I'm sure we'll see him at some point if there's injuries or anything. But uh, he's just got to continue to work on his game and get stronger. And, uh, you know, again, he'll he'll play in this league at some point. Bob, really appreciate your time today, especially I know the team's had, got a couple days off here before you play Saturday against Anaheim. So really appreciate your time and uh, enjoy the rest Thank of your you. day. All right. Thanks, guys. Enjoy yep, it. Thanks, Bob. Take care. Take care, Bob. Yep. All right. Thanks, Bob Woods, assistant coach for the Minnesota Wild. Appreciate his time. It looks like uh, uh, the lights were going out on there in the background. But uh, we'll take this time to talk to you about uh, our sponsor on Beyond the Pond, SodaStick.com. Go to SodaStick.com to get your original Minnesota sports-inspired goods. If you haven't seen this stuff yet, you got to check it out. Uh, one of my favorite designs is the uh, North State hat. All of their apparel is screen printed here in Minnesota on super soft, super comfy shirts, and you will love it. We're going to hook you up with 15% off your next order. So use the code KFAN for 15% off. That's SodaStick.com, S-O-T-A-S-T-I-C-K.com. Original Minnesota sports-inspired goods. Use the code KFAN for 15% off. Pat, um, hard not to like the, the, the start of the Minnesota Wild. I know we said we talked about this on Wild Fan Line the other night. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, they're the first two games on the road. All your new faces, I thought, played really well. And then... Uh, the the home opener, the the electricity in the building, the atmosphere, and you saw that top line of Kaprizov, Eriksenek, and uh, Zuccarello uh, just just take over in that game. When you have guys like that, you have a chance to win every night, uh, even when you don't play your best. And there's going to be nights where they're not going to play their best. And but the but the but the good thing is is that they can strike quickly, and and that's something that we've never really seen or had out of this team before, Brandon, I, I was thinking back, okay, yeah, we can talk Gabbert, but, um, you know, and Gabbert Demetrio was pretty good. For, yeah. For yeah. Stretch. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, with, with Bronco Radovojevic on the wing. What about him? Wow. <laughs> what a blast from the past. Yes. Um, so, you know, if they can hang in there every game, they, they, they've got a chance and, um, you know, it's, it's good to get off to a great start. We, we, you know, we, we, we discussed that, uh, you know, you don't want to be looking up early in the year and get frustrated. And it, it's so hard to, to, to catch teams, especially when you have two or three ahead of you and um, <clears throat> they've gotten off to a great start. They feel good about each other, uh, you know, and they have a really good opportunity to, to win two this weekend. All right. I, I, I have what I believe is a tough question to answer that I'm going to ask you, Pat. Okay. Um, the center on that top line, Jewel Eriksnick. Let's face it, we've been looking for a first line, top line center forever in the history yep. of this whole organization. We've been doing the flirting with Jack Eichel. Uh, we're constantly trying to look at that early on, but he had 19 goals last year, three goals the other night. Uh, good start here. Um, is Jewel Eriksson Eck a number one center? I don't know. I, I will tell you this I don't know if they go as much for um number one number two number three center i i think they go uh team collectively meaning you know i you know and and to me to the you know i i i still think at some point in time we're gonna see eck greenway and felino reunited 
I just, for some reason, I believe that. Um, and, and why? Just because they were effective um, and they were trustworthy and, you know, they were just that identity line that this team needed. Now, that being said, um, you know, I, I think we talked about earlier, Brandon, about, you know, you know, the, you know, early on there, there may be t- some tweaks here and there. We've seen Duhame go up for Rask. We've, you know, seen guys move around a little bit. If, if uh, Goudreau can continue um, to play the way he's playing with Fiala, uh, you know, that I think that will be um, really, really helpful to the, to the team where they won't have to make so many adjustments, decisions, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, ultimately, you know, it, it, it you know, that's what it's going to come down to is, is how they're playing, how they're fitting. And, and, you know, uh, as long as they keep winning uh, at a consistent level, you know, maybe it'll stay like this for a while. Here's how I'll answer the question because I, I do think it's a tough question because obviously, like he's not he's not going to remind you of Connor McDavid or Nathan. No, McKinney, right? Like he's no. he's not going to be he's not going to be that level. No, number one center, but he's elite defensively. Yep, he's he's elite on the penalty kill. Um, he put up 19 goals not playing with first line guys last year. I mean, Felino and Greenway are both good NHLers. Right. You know, um, you know, Felino might even be an underrated NHLer. But, you know, let's face it, it's not your playmaking elite type first line type players. And he still put up good numbers last year. And I think as long as he's with Kaprizov and Zuccarello, he'll put up good numbers this year. He'll put up number one setter numbers with those two guys. And I think that's the other point of this, Pat, is uh, I, I brought up this point with you a million times over the year that uh, years that, uh, you know, Patrick Kane, if you put, whoever you put with Patrick Kane, their numbers will elevate. Yeah, yeah, no. And, you know, Matt Zuccarello, when he was signed here, I looked at him as like a second line player. Well, guess what? Last year and the start of this year, he looks like a first line player because he's yeah. playing with Kaprizov. And Jewel Erickson Eck is going to look like a first line center because he's playing with Kirill Kaprizov. So um, as long as he's with those two, uh, he'll look like a first line center. And, and I think he is borderline, you know, he's not going to be a top end first line center, but I think he's better than Miko Koivu uh, yeah. was for, for most of his career. You know, they're a little bit different type of players, but. Um, and we always considered Koivu more of a second line center on a Stanley Cup winning team. Uh, I, I guess though, the question is gonna be though, even if even if there are people out there that consider Jewel Erickson Eck a number one center, and I think you could make that argument, I still think they're gonna need a center, a top line center, to win a Stanley Cup. Ryan Hartman's okay, Frederick Goudreau's okay. Maybe Marco Rossi turns into that player. I would hope that he would, and I think the fact that Erickson Eck is showing he can play with those two. Uh, makes it easier where maybe Rossi doesn't have to be the number one guy early in his career and can kind of slide into a number two center for for the foreseeable future. Um, but uh, I, I guess I kind of went everywhere with that answer, Pat, but that, that would be my response. Yeah, and, and, and just uh, a point on Rossi scored his first goal the other night uh, yep. in game of the year in, uh, on the road in, in Texas. So good for him. And I think they are being really, really smart with them, you know, um, they know his talent and they know his work ethic. And, um, I, I, I think he'll be here sooner than later. And, um, you know, he may get an opportunity to be that guy. And, and I think you and I talked about it this summer, Brandon, why not put him with them? You know, if, if they went that, you know, if they bring him up because he's, he's going to be playing with a star player and he's, he's a smart enough hockey player to, you know, figure it out playing with a guy like a Kaprizov and Zuccarello, yeah. um, I think is going to um, enhance. And he's defensively responsible enough. Right, right. So, um, you know, I listen, it, it's so early in the year. We're three games in. A lot can happen. We don't know about, you know, knock on wood, you know, hopefully there won't be any injuries. But, um, you know, I think we'll see guys, you know, in and out up here a little bit. And, um, you know, we'll have to see. Well, the other part of Erickson Eck, too, that's, you know, usually I kind of dismiss faceoffs a little bit and think they're overrated. But he's a guy historically in his career that has not been great at faceoffs. Yep. And small sample size here, very early on in the season, but he's been great on the draws. Yep. And, and when you've got two possession guys like Kaprizov and Zuccarello on your wings, and specifically when you're starting out power plays to be able to win those draws and to start in the offensive zone, uh, that has been absolutely huge for this team. That uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see if he can do it over the long term. But yeah, to have a guy winning draws is important. Talk about faceoffs for a second too. Is you know sometimes 
you know, we look at a guy, did he win a drive or did he lose a drop, right? And what's his percentage and, and such. It's, you know, I, I want to remind people, it's not all on, on the centerman. Yeah. Your wingers have to be engaged and focused and you have to know and you have to communicate with your wingers. Hey, this guy's been beating me all night. I'm just going to try to tie him up, get in there, you know, right away. Um, and you have a split second to get that puck in, and get it and get control of it. So, but you're right. Uh, bet, you know, back to Aki, he, he has been good and he should be good um, on, on, on face us. He's big, he's strong. Um, he's not slow, you know, with he's, he, you know, he's got you know, pretty good hands. So, um, you know, he should be And and yeah, can, can draws get overrated? Um, they can, depending upon where they are. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. I don't mean to keep going back to this point either, but I, something just popped in my head about, you know, playing with Kaprizov and what that's going to do for your game. If you look at Erickson next three goals, and, and not taking anything away from Erickson Eck, he was great. Yeah. The first goal he scored, they were on a power play. Kapri, Kaprizov takes the puck into the zone. Three Winnipeg Jets all collapsed on Kaprizov. Somehow he gets himself out of it. You know, does a little turnaround, gets it back. I think it was to Goligoski or Spurgeon at the point. And, you know, all of a sudden the Wild have Winnipeg outnumbered in front of the net because the Jets were scrambling in front of their own net. Erickson Eck takes advantage. The third goal, obviously, on a three-on-one, you know, that's Fial and Kaprizov setting him up. Not, you know, not taking away any, anything away from Erickson Eck, especially because his game-tying goal was all him, and that was a yep. great play to hit that thing out of midair. But uh, it, it does show you that just having that star player will will elevate others around them. And, and if you – but uh, and, and I'll add one thing. Um, to yes, your numbers are going to improve playing with star players, no question. But you have to be a smart player too. Sure. You know. Yeah. I mean, listen, and you have to bear down, and you have to, you know, all of those things. And and um, and and you know, he obviously, you know, he's a he's a pretty smart player, and that's why I think they like him there too, because um, you know, he's good. And he's he's great defensively. We know that, and that's going to give freedom to. Kaprizov and Zuccarello to maybe leave the zone a little bit early to maybe take a chance, a little, you know, a, a few more chances and be a little riskier because uh, they know that they got a guy who's going to be back. And, uh, you know, so I listen, I, I really do hope this line continues to flourish and get better and produce on, on a nightly basis. Um, I just hope it doesn't take away from, you know, sure everything the, else. I mean, and I do look at other spots on the roster that, you know, I think at some point Victor Rask with Fiala and Goudreau, they're going to get need a new wing in that spot. I know they tried Duhame up for a, a shift late in that game. Yeah, I, I do think that is a spot later in the year that Boldy or Beckman will, will kind of slide into. I think... Or Duhame. Yeah, I think Duhame, I think they're... they're, they're I don't want to say easing him in, but maybe they are. You know, yeah. get, Getting him used to the National Hockey League. Listen, um, he's got all the skill. He's got all the, you know, he's got great speed. He's not afraid to get to the net. Um, you know, all, you know, he's not afraid to 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 make a hit, whatever. Um, he's a good hockey player, but you know, again, it's it's you know, going from the American League to the National Hockey League. You know, every level. I talk about it all the time uh, till I'm blue in the face. Um, you know, it takes time to get adjusted and and uh, and get used to your teammates and 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 how the National Hockey League works. And um, you know, I I think if he continues on this trend, he'll probably end up being that second line left winger. All right, college hockey, uh, go for St. Cloud State. You were there for the controversy yeah. uh, last Saturday night up in St. Cloud. Uh, the NCHC comes out with a statement after saying basically we blew the call. It was the wrong yep. call. Uh, you experienced it live. I, I heard and saw your reaction to it. Um, it's not often a conference comes out with a statement saying, yeah, our refs blew that call. Yeah, uh, haven't seen that before. Um, it's really, really too bad that that happened. Um, you know, the referee who made the call um, did, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to back him to this point. He did not see the tug on the back of the jersey because he was – facing different angle yeah um and it, it, it's it's really too bad because it was a great series and uh, you know both friday and saturday and instead of talking about how good of a series it was we're talking about the, the call 
and it's unfortunate. Yep. Yep. Um, and you know, uh, two really good teams and, you know, it, it, Thank you know, thank God no one lost points. No one it didn't really affect their pair wise. Um, it's early, it's October. Um, I think everyone, you know, will get over it. But you know, it it, it was just it was it was too bad that it got um I don't want to say ruined, but kind of ruined by by what happened. Sure. Yeah. And un- unfortunate for the ref that they score yeah. immediately after, right? It's not one right. of those where, hey, bad call, play goes into the other end and then right. We talk about it being a bad non-call, but um, you, you eventually uh, get over it. The fact that it directly is a – hey, We have, uh, you know, we're only in, in October, and, you know, we've seen – Minnesota has got some really, really, really good teams, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, five, and, you know, I don't want to put St. Thomas in there yet. It's their first no. year, and they will get there, okay? And once they do get there, watch out. Um, because then we'll have six really, really good teams. Um, but you know, the, 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 the five teams, it, it's, it's ridiculous how, how, uh, how they compete. And I just, man, um, if they were in the same conference, every, like Minnesota plays UMD this weekend. It, I was just going to ask know, you about it, that. It's going to be a great series again. You know, Minnesota St. Cloud last week, um, you know, St. Cloud and, and Minnesota state played. It it's been it's been crazy and uh, yeah and and so tight and so good. Um, it's it's been a lot of fun. Well, let's preview that uh, Gophers UMD series because they uh, they're playing at uh, Mariucci on Friday, then uh, up to uh, uh, UMD on Saturday. Two top five teams in the country here, Pat. Uh, you know, I, I I obviously know a little bit more about the Gophers and the Bulldogs. Yep. What what can you tell us about the uh, the UMD Bulldogs? Well, you know they 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 play a simple simple. Uh, structure, simple style. Um, they don't give up a lot. Um, my biggest question with them going into the year, um, they had to replace 111 goals. Um, and you, do they have the players to do that? But talent wise, potentially, yes. But until they do it, you don't know. Um, so, uh, you know, listen, um, you know, they, they, they played Michigan last week, lost five to one one of their players was, was, was kicked out of the game and, you know, then things just unraveled for him, came back and beat Providence. Um, so listen, they, they've got good goaltending. They've got good D they've got some high end players. Um, we're just going to have to see if they can manage to score enough goals. Um, and like I said, they have the talent too, and they're going to be there, you know, they're, they're going to be there at the end as you know, per usual, you know, there it, it'll be a good series. Pat, as always, enjoy talking with you. We'll talk to you uh, next week on Beyond the Pod. Sounds great, Brandon. Take care. All right. He's Pat Micheletti. I'm Brandon Molesky. Uh, thank you so much for listening or watching. Uh, reminder, uh, you can always listen to the uh, Beyond the Pod on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you subscribe. We would really appreciate that. Also, you can watch Beyond the Pod on the KFN YouTube channel. Also, subscribe to that. Really appreciate it. Beyond the Pod brought to you by SodaStick.com. Use the code KFN. For 15% off your next order. Appreciate you uh, watching or listening. We will talk to you next week right here on Beyond the Pod.